Here is an albino the boys. Look at that. Like we have the only ones in the world right here. It's insane. We always get some preferential treatment when we come down here because you guys know this channel is all about learning about the animals. Show up a little bit here. Get out of here. See that? There are eggs in there. Look at this. There's babies in there. This is how you milk a fish. You gently pump the side. No way. What's happening, everybody? I am back with my buddy Paul Red Ice here at Angel's Hatchery. It's been a long time. I love coming down here. It is one of my favorite uh, places to visit because, you know, you just do such an amazing job, not only with the fish, you've got some reptiles. The layout of his property is beautiful, but I've got a problem, bud. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennedy. This week's shout out goes to Lee Fargo. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. Uh, you know, some of you guys have been following along. Here's what happened. You know, I have that beautiful um, Aquascape ecosystem yes, yes. pond. And you just, man, you, you gave me such great advice. The way we went about yeah, we putting fish in there, we had hundreds of cichlids. And sadly, I had a, uh, a little blue heron uh, that really decimated me. I mean, I thought it was just the snapping turtle I put in. Yeah. And there was some evidence that the turtle did get a few, but a cold-blooded predator, not the same as a warm-blooded no, bird. Um, right. Is yeah. that possible for a heron to really go through that many fish? Uh, well, the, the bigger, the green, the green herons. Okay. The, the, uh, I'm sorry, the green herons are the smaller ones. They get mostly smaller fish. Okay. It's the great blue heron and the great white heron. Those are the two down here in South Florida, the two biggest predator birds. That okay. They can go for a lot of fish in a hurry. Yeah. Overnight, they could, you know, they'll take a dozen fish easy. Well, that's definitely what's been happening. So, yeah. I'm here to kind of get schooled on what I can do to kind of protect my fish better. Yeah. And then I also want to talk to you because one of my favorite species of cichlids that I that I have are the Du Boise and you are something of uh, a novelty here yeah. uh, in breeding those aren't you? Yeah we have we are we've been written up as being the largest producer of Du Boise in the world outside of the actual lakes. Let's Lake go Tang have a Lake look. Tanganyika. Where okay. are the the species the Du Boise that you want to show off here? I know you okay. you have a really well, let's think walk down well you actually start with the big one. Huh? Okay yeah yeah let's do it. Look at these fish guys. So these are the Du Boise, and I just love the personalities of these yeah. fish. Very interesting to watch. Du Boise are cool. They, you can see their babies. They're also great with their babies. See their babies in with them? I do, yeah. Yeah. So they're not aggressive with each other? No, well, they do They do fine. The, like any other fish, they want to eat. They're diurnal fish. Morning and evening are their feeding time. So we feed everything here twice a day. Okay. And these uh, pellets, just to keep them satiated, we. We feed them spirulina green flake every day. Oh wow! Yeah, and a um, spirulina flake from fish food. So that's uh, that's them. We developed an albino strain of this also um, a couple of years ago. We grew up some babies, and now we've got the we've got some big adult albino males spawning with some regular females to create hets, heterozygous for albinoism. And I'll show you that tank over there too. That Very cool. Where we have the big males. Now these guys, um, what lake are they found in? Tanganyika. Okay, so these yeah. are Tanganyika cichlids and they're algae specific? Yeah, it's pri primarily vegetarian, yes, algae eaters. Okay. They're great. You notice on their wall, you'll see these fish picking at the wall. What they're doing, Kenan, is they're picking at hairs of algae that we can't even see. Wow. They're, yeah, oh yeah, and they're, their ponds are bone clean. They do a great job. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And that's why I like the species. They also do an interesting little dance oh, with yeah, each yeah. other. Yeah, they, they do. <laughs> they, they, and what is that? Is that a breeding a mating, thing? Yeah. That is a mating thing. Okay. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, do these guys give birth to live young? Or is it? are they egg, egg bearers? Well, what, what these do is they lay eggs. They hold them in their mouth. Oh, okay. And they hold them in their mouth like a chicken for 21 days. Really? Yeah. And uh, I'm going to do something that I've never done before in film. Okay, let's see. In honor of you being here. Let's I appreciate see. it. Well, my viewers love coming here because we learn so much. Yeah, these are just some young adults. I need to okay. see if I can find what I want here. We always get some preferential treatment when we come down here. 
which is nice because you guys know this channel is all about learning about the animals. Uh, we're out of season, by the way, on spawning. Okay. On spawning. Let's see if we show off a little bit here. Get out of here. See that? Let me see if I can get a good shot of that. There are eggs in there. There are eggs in their So mouth. they're holding the eggs in their mouths. Right. That's right. No way. That is so cool. How yeah. are you telling the males from the females? Well, in here, uh, the back vent. Okay. Uh, we, we vent sex them. Okay. Uh, this is an older male. The vent's very, very tiny in the back. Just a little tiny slit. Okay. The females where the eggs come out are bigger. So she'll lay the eggs and then sw uh, kind of put them. Look at this. Now these are out of season. So when you say out of season. It... Well, normally they spawn in uh, from February through um, September. Wow. But we have so many of them. They keep the water very warm and they're in top condition top condition that's why they're still they're still spawning that's and, incredible yeah anyway. how many years have you been at this again 52 52 years guys in so business. in business that's amazing so it's safe to say paul knows exactly what he's talking about um and my goodness that is that was really cool i had never actually seen uh the eggs uh in the mouths of these fish um in my situation will will it be possible to see some babies here those are babies okay so how long do they keep them in their mouths? 21 days. Okay, so 21 days and then the fry, do the fry stay near the adult female uh, for yeah, a while? Yeah, only, only for about a week. And then, uh, and then the female will drop them into a, uh, like a little rock structure where she feels is safe. Okay. And, and um, they're on their own. Now, I'm not sure if you've seen the pond that I have them in. I have seen the big pond. Yeah, it's got a lot of rock crevices. Um, you know, it, it's definitely a cool habitat, but uh, man, I would like to get the population going again on these guys because yeah. well, well, I just love them. Uh, and, yeah. and since they're an angel's hatchery speciality here, yeah. I definitely want to have the legacy growing up in my pond as well. So I'll definitely be taking a few of these to Boise here today for okay. sure. So, I mean, what would be a good group uh, to start with again? What do you reckon ratio, sex well, ratios well, and stuff? Uh, I would say about 1.4, one male okay. to four females. And then more than one colony because if you lost your male, you'd be out of business. Be out of business. So we're talking, okay, so 2.8. 2 uh, 2 8. All right, let's do 2.8 of these Du Bois. -y. And uh, why don't you show me some of those albinos? Yeah, They're we'll do pretty it. cool. We'll do it. Let's go over here. Let's check it out. So, guys, this is just a small sliver of what is at Angel's Hatchery. Um, it's an amazing place. I love getting down here. It's it's a little bit further south for me. Um, I'm up in Jupiter, Florida, and they're down here, uh, way down south, uh, closer to Miami. So it takes me about two hours to get down here, but it's always a treat, and it's always fun to pick the brain of someone with this vast amount of knowledge. And I'll tell you what, I didn't think I'd like fish as much as I, I turned out doing, <laughs> but I'll tell you what there, bud, when I lost some of those fish, it hurt because they would oh, yeah. come over to greet me every morning. I swim with the fish. I put a mask and snorkel on, and it's just amazing to see that. So here is an albino Du Boise. Look at that. Extremely, we have the only ones in the world right That's here. That's insane. And what we're doing here is we are crossing them back to the normal form okay. to create heterozygous. This is an animal that looks like the regular, okay. only it has the albino gene. Gotcha. So when they spawn, one out of four will be albino. Wow. When these, which they're doing right now. Uh, so what's the best way, if someone's looking or in the market for some uh, cichlids, what's the best way to reach out to you then? Yeah, you know what? The best thing to do is, um, uh, the best thing to do really is just to call. Okay. You call Angel's Hatchery and speak to either Judy who is the boss, my wife. <laughs> you got or it. Or myself. All right, very cool. So I'll leave the number uh, in the description of this video. Sure. So that you guys can also, if you're looking to stock up your fish tanks, uh, you ship all over the world, don't you? Yeah, we do, but we prefer to stay within the United States. Gotcha. It's just a bit safer yeah, yeah, for the yeah. fish. Yeah. Very cool. Um, all right. So um, we, we've we talked about Du Bois, which is something that you're pretty passionate about and yeah. and uh, good about. What what else should I get again to kind of get this uh, pond going and oh, let me tell you 
This is our number one selling fish. The electric blue. Yeah. What is the Latin on this fish? Um, they just changed it to Elanicara Niasa. They put it in the pe peacock family. Oh, really? Yeah, a lot of people just call it by the original Haplochromus electric blue Ali. Okay. So I would go by that. All right, very cool. Now this, I, I got to tell you, when, when I, I, this was how I noticed um, we were losing yeah. fish because they yeah, they're, they're sure. just incredible the way they shimmer we had and just like he told me if you go back and watch the first video we did here at Angel's Hatchery you had me put these in first right. to establish right uh, because you know this way other fish wouldn't eat the offspring right exactly. um, just amazing amazing fish and when you get this many fish together it creates such an incredible um, vision of the pond. I mean, it is really incredible. So well, those are the females. These are females. Okay. Now again, now for the. Oh my gosh! So oh the babies. My, there's babies so in watch there. And, watch right in here. What? This is how you milk a fish. You gently pump the sides. No way! You pump the sides of the face as you hold the bottom jaw open. Okay. You pump the sides of the face. Those are all little. And you fish have to do it about a dozen times. And then you can check her, and oh she's done. The, guys, those are fish fry. I'm going to go go submersible here. Half Look at this. fish, half fry. Now, where we go from here, and this is off-season, completely off-season. Okay. What we, where we go from here, we have incubation tanks set up in the building. All right. Now, these will go into an incubation tank. So, you're actually going to take them and raise them up in a more controlled situation. I'm going to sell them to you in about four years for $100 each. <laughs> Get out of here. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's a joke. I know. He's teasing. That's awesome. Hopefully, I'll have my own uh, fish. Yeah, we won't have will. any more drama you with will. herons. But um, now, as far as these guys, the males obviously are a little bit more expensive uh, because of that beautiful coloration yeah, that's yeah. how it works yeah, yeah, yeah. similar in tortoises right, right. you know uh, the bigger the tortoise though is the when more. you're paying more money right. he's a tortoise nerd also friends oh yeah oh yeah uh, anyhow so for me um, realistically you know what am I going to be able to do here uh, what what do you recommend as far as a, a group of these well, I gotta be careful not to break my bank. Yeah, this will do it. These guys will do it. I have a smaller size of these that are just beginning. Okay. They're about 18 months old. Okay. So we can begin to see males and females too. So we'll talk about that. We'll okay. Go. Very we'll cool. We'll Appreciate that. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm feeling good. <sighs> Malawi eye biters. Right. Yeah. That's a great fish. That's a f f amazing fish. But you know what, Paul? You know, I would get them from you, and I see them disappear. Um, I don't know what was happening. I think they're they look like a snook almost. Yeah, they do. You know, uh, but this is a predatory fish. Well, yeah. Well, they yeah, they're an open water fish. Okay. They're not really a delicate fish. Okay. So I, and they're fast. Well, it's so just so interesting. Why, I, I don't know why how either. Many, how many did you have? How many males? Uh, I think I had like three or four males. So I don't know what happened with them, but. They're, they probably got eaten by the bird, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just such a bummer. Awesome. All right, where are we at right now? Okay, and here we have uh, Sakalafi, a uh, fish that originally came in as Blue Lucerna, and it was named after a famous old friend of mine, Ross Sakalaf, who passed away many years ago. But that's the blue fish, and then the albino form in here is albino Sakalafi. And then we also have some... Uh, we have some red zebras, the orange fish. The thing with the African cichlids are, it's almost like swimming candy. Yeah, yeah. They're just, I mean, they just look enticing. And when you put them in a situation like I had in the back pond, I mean, it's Wonderful. just a myriad of colors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what, Ken, take a shot. This is uh, the blue cobalt. Okay. Yeah. And what a, wow, that's a nice looking fish. Yeah, they are beautiful. Uh, what lake do these guys come from? They come from Malawi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, what do you say? Some people, some purists, don't like if you mix the lakes. Like in my situation, I'll have some Tanganyika yeah. and some Malawi fish. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you think about that? Everybody that we sell to pretty much mixes the lakes. Okay. Uh, they they co-inhabit very well. There are a couple of minor rules that you need to watch out for. In other words, put, give them a big enough environment, feed them twice a day, and those are... That's basic. And feed them good fruit. Okay. Feed them the best fruit. Watch the water quality. Those are key things. 
All right, now that I'm spending money again on our fish, um, I want to protect my investment a yeah. little bit better. Yeah. What would you recommend I do All right. to protect against these herons? Now you're in a, you know, you've got shade cloth. These are fully enclosed and I can't possibly do that. What's this? That's that hanging ball? That's a bird you turn. Get out of here. Oh yeah, no, no, no. That's a bird you turn. Really? Birds don't like metallic eyes. We have them inside. We have smaller ones We've, where they have metallic eyes all around it this big. But if you hung a few of those around outside, they're always moving, the eyes are moving. We have that type of deterrent. We have another one that we just started with that just chased away a great blue heron that had been here for about three months. What it is is a floating alligator head. It's this okay. big. It's rubber and it has, again, metallic yellow green eyes. And uh, apparently the birds don't like that. Well. It looks like I'll be investing in one of these. This almost looks like a Japanese lantern type situation. So it looks like I'll be getting one of these floaty balls. We'll try anything because I don't want to hurt the herons. They're just trying to make a living themselves. Oh, yeah, you know? that's right. They're beautiful They're animals. Doing what comes natural to them. And we just got to be smarter than the herons. They're yep. pretty effective predators. So what's going on here? Let's see. Well, this is a fish that's na it was native to Lake Victoria but it became extinct in the lake. That's wow. a myth. Let me, let me pull out one that's sure. more red for you. You got it. These are just beginning to cool. color up. It's cool. Now, if you look this fish up, it goes under um, Salmon Hippo Point. Okay. It's extinct in the lake. They're only, the only ones you'll find are the ones that are being bred in captivity. It's this greenish red fish. Why'd they go extinct in the lake? Was it well, what happened? collection? I was told that the the natives around Lake Victoria stocked the lake with tilapia, and so the tilapia outcompeted okay. all of the fish in this family. It's one of the reddest fish. Of, they get extremely red, by the way, red and green primarily, and a little bit of yellow and blue too. But yeah, they kind of have a really cool look. Yeah. And then the females of this fish are just solid green. There's a female there. There's a female there. So these are functionally extinct in the wild. That's what I'm told. Yes. Have not been there to verify, but yes. Wow. Definitely getting the education today, friends. If you like fish, this is the video for you. Awesome. Beautiful. Thanks so much, man, for taking the time and really uh, teaching us about these cichlids. I mean, I've always learned a great deal when I am here, and uh, it's fun. It's worth the drive. Uh, and again, you guys know that whenever um, I rarely purchase animals, uh, and when I do, I like to purchase from people that really are passionate and knowledgeable. And I just walked through a little bit of a cobweb there. No big deal. But um, this is, you know, my recommendation is definitely look into Angel's Hatchery. Angelhatchery.com. And uh, what do we got in here? Uh, this is a variety of both Tanganyikan and Malawi fish, almost half and half. So there are frontosa, there are other types of trophies. Oh, I, love it. I still have a frontosa kicking around, oh, buddy. Good, good. Yeah, That's I love the, the frontosa. Yes. And then there's um, red zebras in Kenya and the electric yellow labs and dwarf blue zebra. You know, when you started this, Paul, not to cut you off, yeah. well, you know, where did you start this? Did you start this up north or did you start it down here? The actual business I started, we came down here to form Angel's Hatchery. We didn't really know anything about Miami. I just was read as a boy that Miami was the hub for the tropical fish industry. Um, and it, that had changed, by the way, just when I got here, it had moved up to Hillsborough County around Tampa. So, but we decided that um, we, I immediately found a job as a breeder for a local hatchery. And uh, after about six months, I found a farm that the owner had stopped raising fish and um, the facility was there but he had he was done with the business so i picked up there and began to lease a number of farms and then built a couple of others cool there's so many people want to know how do you become yeah. you or do what i do and well, it's just <laughs> one step at a time you know yeah yeah you got to be yourself first yeah got to be true to yourself whatever that is uh, and and if you're passionate about what you do then you're true to yourself um, I think success follows that. Right. So I was always, as a boy, I started when I was eight years old. My um, my uh, father took me over my uncle's house. Who, down in his basement, he had uh, gigantic Molinicio, different types of mollies, mostly just green sailfins, monster mollies. 
and uh, uh, there I became uh, very uh, hooked on on tropical fish. You only had about three varieties, but and I was only there twice. But I went home and I got a little aquarium and ended up turning my mother's pantry and then the basement into a, a breeding operation. I was giving them to the schools and selling them to to the pet shops and. I would go to the stores when new fish came in. There was a place called the Westchester Aquarium in Hartsdale, New York, and we would go. I would go over there and um, get the newest fish. And the guy there was a real fish fish geek, and he would tell me all about these newest fish that came in. We would just sit there, and sometimes for half an hour or an hour, he would just talk about these different types of fish. And, and um, I was always up for anything new, and I would bring them home, and I would spawn them, and bring them back to him, and. Anyway, uh, so I really got into it as a, a very young boy, yeah. and um, even when I went off to school, I went to college in Detroit, I took some of my favorite fish with me to Detroit and set up a couple of big aquariums um, and uh, just kept going. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and you know, uh, a lot of us have similar stories. My father, who recently passed away, was the guy who got me my first turtle, yeah. and it's just amazing that that connection to yeah, that natural yeah. world uh, that fathers sometimes give to their yes, sons yes. Uh, or mothers too. My mom was a big hand in it as well. But I, I, something else I'd say is so many people want to start off like this yeah, and you can't. you can't do it. You got to have the knowledge first. Yeah. You got to get the foundation of knowledge uh, and that's, that's what it, the fun is actually. It's that journey of learning all about these animals and you can see this pond is just chock full of cichlids and this is just a pond for yourself isn't it yes yeah this is nice what a beautiful place yeah these are this is just a uh, it's an overflow area but also it's it's uh, makes a beautiful pond and it's about a four thousand gallon pond and there's roughly a thousand fish in here and uh including some green mollies right where i started yeah there's green mollies gambusia and then all types of cichlids both tanganyika and malawi Nobody ever dies in here. There's one giant koi in here. See him coming up here? Oh, here he comes, yeah. Uh, he's gonna go underneath that fern. Wow, it's amazing. Really cool. Well, listen, friends, as always, oh, I'm almost, don't you go dying on me now, Kenny. <laughs> uh, as always, it's just, it's a pleasure to hang out with you, man. Pleasure I really, to see you I, I, I love to uh, see your passion. After 52 years, it hasn't diminished, not one bit. In business. And it's inspirational. And uh, we want to inspire people to do what they love in life and also to inspire you guys to do the right thing for the animals that we happen to be the stewards of. Uh, it's very important. So uh, one last look. We only just scratched the surface of what Angel's Hatchery is, but uh, we'll be back again. And uh, in the meantime, if you're looking for Trophius, the Boise, he's uh, got an amazing assortment of them. Uh, and if you're looking for something unique, those albinos are out there waiting for you. Yeah. So hit up Angel's Hatchery. We'll have the phone number in the description. Thanks again, Paul. You're very and well. uh, I, I'd shake your hand, but I'm full right now, yeah, buddy. Yeah, you got it. Uh, but we'll, we'll see more of Paul here pretty soon. See you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know what you thought of today's video and Angel's Hatchery. Thanks we'll for see watching. You. you got it. He's a great guy. Oh, no, you're the best. <laughs> Oh, say goodbye to Eduardo, too, he likes... See you, Eduardo! All right, man. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs>